Magandang umaga, gising na Pilipinas. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to The Daily Dose. Are you passionate about your relationship with God? What does it mean to be passionate about our relationship with God or anything for that matter? I think passion for most of us is seen in romantic relationships, strong interests, be it in things that we love, sports, uh, anything. And yet, what does it really mean to be passionate? Well, interestingly, the etymology of the word passion, the history behind where the word passion comes from, is that the word passion comes from the root word to suffer. That's interesting. How does passion have anything to do with suffering? Well, they're one and the same. If you look at anything in your life that you are passionate about, you are also willing to suffer for it. Whatever your passions are, if it's a relationship, a career, Anything, whatever you're passionate about, you also are willing to suffer for it. You may not feel it because you're so devoted to it. And yet, are we passionate about our relationship with God? The real testament of being a passionate Christian, a passionate disciple, is not how fired you up at a conference or in church or when you're fruitful. True passion is how fired up are you? How zealous, how faithful, how joyful are you when you suffer? Let's look at a scripture in 2 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4. In 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 12, Peter speaking to all of us as Christians. Peter's a unique book because it's written to a Christian audience in general, whereas the letter of Galatians was maybe written to the church of Galatia. It applies, it applies to us, of course, but Peter is written to a bit more broad of an audience. And it says in verse 12, he's trying to communicate to us on how to be mature and faithful as Christians. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the Spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or as any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not know the gospel of God? And it is hard for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do what is good. This is amazing. The Bible says right here that we're going to suffer. And when we suffer, we should what? We should rejoice. We should be grateful that we're suffering to be a Christian. I don't know about you, but maybe you suffer because your boss wants you to work on Sundays and it puts your job in, 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 in at risk because you're not willing to seek because you have to seek first his kingdom to go to work on Sundays and you got to take a stand that, that's a form of suffering it's pain that is caused you're not passionate about your relationship with God if you're not willing to suffer through the instability of your career for the sake of your relationship with God maybe schooling maybe you have professors that are trying to pressure you to come in on Sundays or to go to class late on a Friday night and you want to go to the devotional. What I'm saying is that suffering is the testament of passion. That suffering is an opportunity for you to be more like Jesus. Peter's writing this out of personal experience. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles were arrested by the Sanhedrin. They were then flogged, beaten, And then the Bible says they were released. And it says that when they left the Sanhedrin, they rejoiced in the name of Jesus because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Peter's not telling us to do something that he himself hadn't done on many occasions. Suffering, though 
shouldn't be for any other reason except for being a Christian. He says, hey, if you're suffering because of your own sin, that's not good. In the same way, if your job is on the line because you're showing up work to late, that's not good. That's not you suffering for being a Christian. That's you suffering for being a lack of an example of a Christian. If you suffer, it's an opportunity to show how passionate you truly are about God. Suffering doesn't remove your passion. It just exposes when there's a lack of passion in your life. You know, one of the greatest examples of passion and as it pertains to being willing to suffer is for me, my mom. My mom is a disciple. For those that have met her, she's one of the coolest people you'll ever meet in your life. She's full of joy. She's loving. She's encouraging. I can honestly say that both my parents, but as it pertains to my mom, she met all of my needs and most of my wants. Whatever it was, she, the house was always clean. She always cooked dinner. And she always took care of us. And I always knew my mom loved us, but I remember the moment I really knew my mom loved me. I was about eight or nine years old, and we went school clothes shopping because the new year, the new school year was upon us. And that was always an exciting time to get a couple new outfits, and, and we were going to get a new pair of shoes. <clears throat> and there were, most of the shoes were $30, $35. This was back in like 1997. But I wanted a pair of shoes that were $80 back then. And I wanted the most expensive pair. My mom told me, you know, Ricky, I I wish we could, but we can't. We can't. But I threw a fit. I was like, these are the ones I want. These are the ones I want. And I remember my mom just like with a somber look on her face, she just was, okay, I'll get them for you. And I remember in that moment feeling happy, like I got what I want. But I remember in that moment, I looked down and I saw my mom's shoes. And they were this old pair of Nike running shoes. And you know when shoes are white, but they're so old and they're so tattered and they're so worn out that they have like this grayish brown nasty color to them. And those were the shoes that she was wearing. And anyone that knows my mom now knows that she has style. And she has more than just a pair of shoes now, amen. But I remember in that moment, I go, even at eight, nine years old, I remember I was, I was broken. I'm so ungrateful. Here I am, I want the most expensive pair of shoes, and my mom only has one pair of shoes, and they're falling apart. And I remember that made a mark on me for the rest of my life. I was very grateful for my parents did. I appreciated what they did, and, and I was very grateful for that. And yet, my mom was willing to suffer in ways that I didn't even see and didn't even know. I remember growing up, I thought that the big fast food restaurant cups, you know, they're made of plastic. I I always thought that 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 was our main source of cups for drinking water and things because I thought they were just good cups because they held a lot of water. But it was actually because my parents didn't have a lot of money. I never knew. They always took care of me. They took the sufferings upon themselves. Why? Because they were passionate about me and my sister. They loved us very, very much and they wanted to take care of us. True passion is when you're willing to suffer with a smile on your face. When you're willing to suffer and not get discouraged or frustrated by it. You know, i got to ask you, does it frustrate you being a disciple when things are challenging? Does it rob you of your joy when things don't go smoothly for you in being a disciple? If not, maybe the root issue is you lack a passion for God. I want to give us a very simple challenge today. And that is to be fired up no matter what. To be joyful no matter what. Raul Moreno always taught me when things are going great, be fired up. Be joyful. But when things are not going great, that's when you got to be, as he would say, super fired up, super joyful, super faithful. Because it's in those moments that your true self is revealed. And my encouragement to us is this. As the coronavirus is going around, as the time will come, truth be told, that family members and those that we know may start dying from this, this virus. That's a reality. Let's not lose our joy. Let's not lose our faith. Let's not lose our passion for God. And no matter the suffering that comes, let us be defined by our passion for our God. Have a great day. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying The Daily Dose. If you haven't already, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I wanna ask you a favor. If you're interested at all in a personal Bible study, message me. If you want to come to a virtual Bible discussion, I can help you find one in an area near you. 
If you have any prayer requests, please message me if you're interested in any of those things. I would love to help you strengthen your relationship with God.